Welcome to CFT's online lecture series. Today we're going to talk about paste waxes. This also happens to be our last lecture for the semester. Paste wax is the final process that you would use in uh, finishing. What paste wax does is it covers the, the abrasive um, the scratches basically that you're creating in the rub outs. So if you remember when you're doing your rub out, you're basically creating a scratch pattern onto your piece. And the finer the scratch pattern, the higher the sheen you're going to develop. And what the paste wax does is it kind of goes over those tiny little scratches. So when you hold your piece up and you're kind of looking at it close, it covers all those uh, fine little scratches. It also protects your piece from you know, small little scratches as well. So let's talk a little bit about wax for just a moment. So as most of you know, wax comes in solid form at room temperature. It is heated to be liquefied. Paste wax is, has solvents added to it, such as paint thinner and mineral spirits. Some paste wax, such as Brie wax, which you can see right here, has toluene added to it. Because Brie wax has toluene added to it, it's becomes highly toxic and actually cannot be used in our class. So don't bring it into school. Uh, use it as much as you want at home, but make sure you're using it in an extremely well ventilated area. There are no abrasives in paste waxes. So it's just the wax and the solvents. So once the solvents evaporate, all, your, all you are is left of the wax. So there are three different types of waxes. It's your beeswax which is your standard wax that comes from honeybees. Paraffin wax, which is a product, which is a petroleum product, is a very soft wax. Then we have a carnauba wax. Carnauba wax, also known as the queen of waxes, is an extremely hard wax. Kind of hear it. It's pretty hard. Uh, it is made from the carnauba palm tree, which is typically found in Brazil. Carnauba wax is typically mixed with uh, paraffin wax and beeswax just to make it more, um, just to soften it up a little bit because it's such a hard wax. Uh, let's talk about the different types of paste waxes that you see right here in front of you. First, we have Johnson's paste wax, which you might see floating around school. You also might see Minwax paste wax floating around school in our uh, tool cabinets. We have Fides and Sun, Brie Wax, which I said before is, has toluene added to it, so it's a very toxic wax and cannot be used in school. Then we have Libron Paste Wax, which is a huge favorite amongst woodworkers. It actually has a beautiful aroma to it. It smells really, really nice. Whenever I smell wax, it just makes me happy because it means that I'm done with my finishing, finishing of my project. And then we have citrus, um, Howard Citrus Shields paste wax. So any one of these uh, paste waxes will work fine for your piece. Um, Fides and Sun, which is probably, though it is um, combustible, because it does contain naphtha, it is probably the least toxic amongst all of these here. Though Citrus Shield, Howard Citrus Shield paste wax is also is also probably one. I'd say they're fairly they're both fairly equivalent in terms of less the toxicity of these two. These would be the lowest. Then Libron, Johnson's, and Brie wax. Again, I'm going to say this one more time. Because a couple of you are going to ask me about this. Avoid Brie Wax. Do not bring it into school. Uh, both Libron Paste Wax, Howard Citrus Shield Wax, and Fides Wax come in multiple colors. Fides has seven different, uh, there are seven different colors available for Fides, Fides and Sun. Um, Libron Paste Wax, I believe, has four different colors. And then Howard Citrus Shield has five different colors available. 
Now another type of wax, which you guys have, may have already used, is a cream wax. Howard's Feed and Wax. Cream wax is slightly different than a paste wax. It doesn't harden like a paste wax, it always kind of stays wet. And it, um, as you can see, I will demonstrate. It's always typically going to be wet. Still smells great though. So it doesn't really function the same that a, um, as a paste wax does. If you remember in the rub outs, it's used prior to using a paste wax. Now, if you remember uh, earlier on in the semester, we talked about household polishing compounds, Pledge, Endust, Murphy's Oil, not Murphy's Oil, sorry, Old English, uh, Lemon Oil. Those are products that you want to avoid. Even though they say they polish and they clean um, your furniture, they're all solvent-based. Most of them are made of paint thinner. Paint thinner is what is used to remove paste wax. So if you apply a paste wax to your piece and then you, um, sorry, my dog is sitting right at my feet. So that's why if I'm looking down, I'm looking at my dog. I'll introduce you to her in just a moment. Uh, so if you use paste wax, I'm sorry, if you use any household polishing compound on your piece after you've applied wax, you're just going to remove the wax. So you want to stay away from those products. Soap and water or just a clean dry rag is your best bet for cleaning your piece off. Now we are going to talk about the application of paste wax. If you remember just before I mentioned um, that paste wax is removed with paint thinner. So if you remember from the rub out uh, lecture, I keep my paint thinner in just a little handy little jar like this. It's easy, more accessible than carrying a gallon around. If I had had wax on my piece, which I actually don't have any wax on this piece, I would take a rag, dump the paint thinner on the rag, and just go around wiping it off and just to remove the excess wax until it's all removed. And then once the paste wax is removed, I'm going to take my can of Libron paste wax, neutral color, and this stuff smells great. You'll see it um, in, uh, when we're in class. But once I, whenever I smell this, it's kind of like the smell of victory because it's, I'm finally done. The piece is complete. The finishing process is done. So with the application of paste wax, any cotton type of cotton applicator, like t-shirt or rag or anything like that will work fine. One, of the, one thing that actually works really well is a shoulder pad. Shoulder pad from a woman's old shirt, not the type that have nylon in it, but the nylon stitching, but the cotton shoulder pads. These actually work really, really well for paste wax application. Another uh, thing, instrument you can use for the application of paste wax is a polishing pad. These are pads that I just picked up at uh, O'Reilly's Automotive Store. These actually work great as well for um, paste wax application. A couple rules you want to follow prior to applying your paste wax. If you have applied Howard Feed and Wax, which is right over here in the corner, you want to wait two to four days after the application of Howard Feed and Wax before you apply your paste wax. Preferably a week, but I know that time is is an issue basically for most woodworkers. So two to four days is, prefer is the recommendation for um, the application of paste wax after using Howard Feed and Wax. Now if you've done the three-step process, the three-step rub-out process, which step one is leveling, step two is smoothing, and step three is polishing, you have to wait a minimum of 24 hours. So it's better to wait two to four days, but a minimum of 24 hours is, is adequate for the application process. So you've applied everything, everything's been rubbed out, everything's great. We're going to use my, um, my, my bench from my hand tool joinery class as our uh, example of how to apply paste wax. You're going to take your rag, 
just going to get a little bit of wax on it and you're just going to go in a circular motion. Now, one of the things that I stress to you is never follow the directions on the can. The same thing goes with this. If you look at the can, the directions on this can will tell you to rub it in and to let it sit for 20 minutes. You do not want to do that. You want to rub it in, you get a nice good coat on your piece. Circular motion, you can go with the grain or you can go against the grain. I always find that a circular motion is best for the application process. So I have a nice coat. You're not really going to be able to see this on camera, but there's a, there's a haze on my wood right now, which is what I want. That means I have wax on my wood. And as soon as that is done, I'm going to take another rag. And I'm just going to wipe it off. You do not want to let your wax harden on your piece. It's going to be really, really challenging and difficult to take it off. You're going to end up having to pull out some paint thinner just to soften it up a little bit. And it's just going to be too challenging to take it off. So right then and there, in a matter of what, a minute, we have just applied a coat of wax. If you smell it, it smells great. I'm just a big fan of that smell. And you will be too when you start to smell all these products. Uh, you roughly want to wait overnight before the application of a second coat. Two to three coats is recommended. So it's um, a little late right now, but typically I would, I'm going to let it sit overnight and then I'm going to apply another coat in the morning. And then I could, um, then tomorrow night I could actually apply my third coat. So roughly overnight um, in between coats. And there you have it. That is your lecture on paste waxes. It's pretty simple. It's uh, probably the easiest step in finishing. It's also the last step. It's a step to rejoice for because it means your project is done. And that is all. So I will see you guys. Oh, Tova. Come here, Tova. You guys want to meet my dog, Tova? Come here. Come here. I'll show you my dog, Tova. She's been, some, a couple of you have asked about her. Come here. Okay, come here. Ready? One, two, three. Up you go. Oh. This is my dog, Tova. She tends to sit at my feet when I'm working. So say hi, Tova. Look, look over there. Hey, hey, hi. No, okay, you can say bye now. Go look. Okay, bye. All right, I'll see you guys in class. All right, take care. Thanks.